Do you remember how I was sued by the former Deputy Premier of New South Wales for daring to allege that he was corrupt? Yes, the Trade Commissioner guy, as seen on TV. And you know, naturally to help him with the case, the New South Wales Police stuck a strike force with surveillance powers on my producer and me, then violently arrested my producer over, let's be honest, nothing. The police then dropped the charges, paid the costs, Barilaro dropped his lawsuit against me, but we wouldn't have had these victories if we couldn't represent ourselves in court. So thanks to all of you who helped us raise that million dollars to fight these battles and to the brave journalists at Crikey who wrote pearl clutching article after pearl clutching article, not only about how we did raise money to defend ourselves, but also a bunch of strange opinion pieces, the kind of, I don't know, they didn't really give a clear opinion, frankly, but they were just passively, aggressively snarky and boring, which I guess that's just another day in the office for Crikey. Subscribe to them now if you haven't had enough passive aggressive bitching at your office job and you want to read it in article form. Just a month or two ago, they published an article that was originally titled, PR Guy 17 Friendly Geordies both show defamation law working as intended. An article that claims to be analysis that they, they have such a high opinion of their abilities, don't they? It doesn't analyze shit. It just says John's case against Google and me was pretty clear cut. The decision to award him money was fair and normal because, hey, that's just the law. In other words, sky is blue or some little shit overdone metaphor that they use on Twitter all the time. Cam, at the same time we were being sued, we had a strike force surveilling us. The deputy premier was suing a YouTuber, Cam. Yes, I'm sure case law from hundreds of years ago being applied to cases about YouTube beef is a great example of how defamation law was originally intended to work. Hammersmith vs. The Milkman. I hope my victory today is used on magical boxes that I can't fathom, uh, showing images of moving people, constantly using this sound effect specifically. <laughs> Hey, like this video if you think that sound effect is still less annoying than Crikey. Cam Wilson doesn't even bother to lay out what the imputations I was sued over were. This is the thing that shits me about this coverage. If you think my claims were indefensible, come out and take Barilaro's side on the imputations I was sued over, Cam. Come on. Say you don't think Barilaro lied to Parliament when he claimed an investment was made at arm's length when he actually signed off on it. Go do it, knock off Nate Silver. At least he actually calls things. Have some f***ing nuts. No mention that the judge took John's side in denying Google and myself a jury and allowed John to hide behind parliamentary privilege so I actually couldn't mount a truth defence. No. Just a normal and fair defo case, according to man who clearly wasn't paying any attention to it and yet acts like he's this qualified expert to say the final word on it. Also in typically weak, crikey weasel words, Cam kind of also implied that he thought it was okay for Avi Yemeni to use the pretext of defamation to unmask an anonymous critic. Listen, can you come to any other conclusion if you don't get too bored halfway through his writing? It makes sense that people shouldn't be able to anonymously spread damaging lies to enormous numbers of people without some kind of recourse. Whether the currently required legal hurdle to unmask someone adequately balances someone's desire for privacy in 2022 is a subject ripe for public debate. What a superfluous paragraph. Are you trying to get your word count up here, Cam, or you, do you legitimately think that's a good point? Cam last year also published a very strong investigative piece that involved the forensic task of looking at how many Patreon supporters we have and then guessing how much money we made. Still managed to get it wrong. He had to update the article to account for the fact that patrons can also set monthly limits. Yes, that's right. Good expose there, Cam. Uh, but perhaps my favourite article was, I call bullshit. Friendly Geordies is the Pauline Hansen of social media. He's definitely no martyr. Just like the One Nation leader, Jordan Shanks Markovina exploits the disaffected for power and money, but he adds hypocrisy to that toxic mix. Mmm, it did give me pause for reflection. Anyway, you hear in the news that Crikey is being sued by Lachlan Murdoch over, let's be honest, a claim they made that, come on, maybe true, maybe not, but far less true than anything I was getting sued by Barilaro over. So of course they've stayed consistent, not egged the suit on, apologised. After all, how hypocritical would it be for Crikey to raise money on the matter? In their own words, wouldn't that be exploiting the disaffected for power and money? <gasps> 
Oh shit. Guess that makes you the Pauline Hanson of paywalls, eh, crikey? Accusing me of exploitation for trying to keep my producer out of prison. Yes, I'm really gaming the system here. The only way crikey would even be moderately comparable is if we wrote a letter to the fixated persons unit daring them to arrest us, which, come to think of it, that'd actually be pretty boss. After spending a year accusing me of all sorts of cynical ploys for daring to defend myself in legal cases I didn't ask for, Crikey literally went out of their way to beg to be sued by Lachlan Murdoch, desperately chasing the clout, yo. Published an open letter actually daring him to do it, which guys, if you want to get sued, it's a bit desperate got a spare Lady Luigi costume if you'd like to borrow it, which I unfortunately found out really pisses some people off. In fact, the man who wrote the article that is the subject of the lawsuit even himself accused me of using the Pauline Hanson playbook to wealth and influence. Mm, this is a fantastic piece from Tory Shepherd on how YouTuber Jordan Shanks Mark Avino is following the Pauline Hanson playbook to wealth and influence. That is a f***ing defamatory, untrue, and now blatantly hypocritical thing to claim for this Henry Rollins if he wasn't sober. Look at him. He looks like if Henry Rollins had all of the personality sucked out of him and replaced with life regret. But I didn't sue crap flag here. In fact, all that said, I'll give Crikey a bit of money for the defense fund. You must now understand how much of a feat it was that Lachlan Murdoch came away as a bigger c than Crikey in this ordeal. Lachlan runs essentially a defamation factory, which f yeah, good on your freedom of speech, Lockie. But come on, let Crikey continue with their $2 shop CNN polemics without threatening to sue them. I'm sorry, but did anyone even read the Benign Keen article? Lachlan Murdoch suing Crikey for defamation because they dared claim his family played a role in the January 6 riots is absurd because who the f reads Crikey? How can it be defamatory if there's no audience? Who honestly thinks lower of Lachlan Murdoch because of that article? Certainly not me. I was starting to have a soft spot for the guy after this snarky elitist Berejiklian and loving wanker took a swipe at him. Like, come on. How much more loathsome is he than the entire Murdoch empire combined? This suit is also absurd because, well, as much as I'm more concerned about the Monopoly News Corp holds in Australia, didn't Fox News commentators deny Biden won the election, thus encouraging January 6. What is Murdoch's case going to be? They weren't as convincing as Newsmax. Credit where credit's due though, Crikey did host a very good article. Not written by them, it was written by Kevin Rudd when our legal cases were coming to a head where he explained that he had donated to our legal fund and thank you very much for that big Kev. And this time he's done the same for Crikey. So to be fair to Crikey, they're really good when Kevin Rudd writes for them. It just seems to be all their native journos that suck ass. Kevin Rudd's article warns of the looming threat of Sky News holding the same power in Australia that Fox has in the USA, and I guess that's why it's important that Crikey defend this shit. But he also argues that Murdoch's suit against Crikey opens up a plethora of questions, including, to paraphrase, why is Murdoch suing a pissant in Australia when he could sue a larger outlet in the USA that has made way stronger imputations? Why even sue when it's pretty obvious Murdoch's reputation wasn't damaged by this article? And part of the answer to these questions is... Australia's awful defamation laws. It's very clear that this isn't about Murdoch's reputation being damaged. The article didn't even name him. Defamation expert Matt Collins QC wrote an article that pretty much argued that certain defamation cases aren't about reputation management. There are many recent examples in this country, most of them in New South Wales, of plaintiffs suing to vindicate their reputations only to find that the cure is worse than the disease even when they win. So why do people sue for defamation if it's not likely to improve their reputation? Defamation cases in this country, particularly in the federal court, have become proxy wars in which powerful players fight political, cultural and business battles that are often little to do with reputation. Defamation is just this Trojan horse that gets this battle through the gates and into court. It could be to enact revenge for another perceived wrong the defendant may have committed against the plaintiff. It could be to waste the time and money of a business rival. It could be to fight a political or cultural war. It could be to just clout chase. <coughs> Or <laughs> the plaintiff could just be a dumbass duped by the increasing industry of ambulance chasing lawyers that make bank from stifling transparency and freedom of speech. Or maybe this is the case for Murdoch. It's an exercise in plain raw power. 
to paraphrase one of Murdoch's more pathetic underlings, maybe he's just doing it because he can. Nick DiGirolamo, John Barillaro, Lachlan Murdoch, Joe Hockey, Clementine Ford, Christian Porter, Gina Reinhardt, what do these people all have in common? No, not that. How could you even think that? They've all sued for defamation, all using the same barrister, Sue Chrysanthu. Do you think they all did it to protect their pristine reputations? Yes, yes I do. That's another thing they all have in common. I honestly don't know what Lachlan wants to achieve by taking on Crikey, I don't know. Maybe it was an idea he cooked up at a Christmas party with Chrysanthu, but in the end, it's a shame because it's a foreign billionaire wasting Australian court time. But one thing is for sure, as long as Australia keeps getting these absurd cases where, let's be honest, really, really bad people, criminals in some cases, feel more comfortable in court and are more likely to win than some bum running their mouth, defamation law is going to need reform. Actually, thanks to Crikey, we have a list of politicians that have sued media outlets for defamation. Here are a few of the more insane cases. Joe Bioki Peterson successfully sued outlets for defamation. Joe Bioki Peterson. The only person that guy should have sued was the pesky casino operator who kept skimming money from... Uh, look, I, I shake too much. Jim Cairns successfully sued the Sydney Morning Herald after they accused him of having an affair. He admitted to the affair years later. Bosh. Eddie O'Bean successfully sued Kate McClymont for defamation. And where's he now? Jail. But to complete this desperately needed reform, it will involve taking on the vested interests of the industry of ambulance chasing defamation lawyers. Some of whom either work on a no win, no fee basis. And because defamation law is so shit, Victories are easy and therefore paydays are easy. And I just think it's a shame that for a year, Crikey has been using its platform to make arguments about defamation law that are antithetical to their current stance on defamation. More specifically, crowdsourcing to fight defamation cases. Now that it pertains to a case against them, accusing me of exploiting the disaffected for money and at the same time digitally panhandling more than anyone else in Australia when they're reportedly on a subscription revenue of $3 million a year according to their their own articles so they've already blown me out of the water and that's without adding the fact that their owner has done single deals selling companies for over 60 million dollars and their parent company has a shareholder capitalization figure of 20 million they have a bunch of wealthy investors one including the leathery host of media watch which just watch watch the difference in tone between him talking about our case and the one that includes his mates <laughs> Well, Shanks has made plenty of enemies, including journalists and conservative politicians he trolls on a regular basis. National Senator Amanda Stoker spoke for many when she told Sky News... He engages in the most vile and base and you know, not based in substance or performance at all slurs um, on people who um, are particularly female and particularly conservative. And now, to what could be one of the media fights of the century, starring a small Australian website in the role of David and a huge multinational media corporation in the role of Goliath, but with no guarantees this time that the little guy will win. And as Jordan Shanks sets about crowdfunding to pay his lawyer's bills, Crikey's Cam Wilson reports he is raking it in. It's safe to assume that Shanks has earned a minimum of 200,000 US dollars from his Patreon and YouTube accounts since Bruz came out, and likely significantly more than that. With scores of people on Twitter pledging money to Crikey after an SOS from its CEO, saying if Crikey lost the case, it could be up for millions in damages and legal costs. Defamation, however, is different. And if Jordan Shanks wants to be regarded as a journalist, he needs to be bound by the rules, which means if he's going to allege that anyone is corrupt, he needs to be able to prove it or pay the price. And it's going to be quite a fight with the Murdoch billions and Lachlan's reputation on one side and Crikey's millions and the principle of press freedom on the other. So is Crikey insane to take this on? Some think it is and suggest Lachlan will litigate them out of business. Others believe Crikey will raise millions in crowdfunding from those who hate the Murdoch media. It's already been promised more than $300,000. And it could emerge a winner even if it loses the case. And the risk for Lachlan? Well, even if he wins, the case could expose a lot of dirty laundry about any editorial role that Fox News and the Murdochs may have played in the run-up to the Capitol riot. And that could be something they would want to avoid. 
But whatever happens, we reckon you could sell an awful lot of tickets to this contest. Classic ABC non-biased play. And finally, one of the major owners being one of the Fairfax boys, JB Fairfax, who made 193 million from one deal. And yet they're asking you for three million dollars to fight, which if we were to apply their logic that they used on me, they're f up. They don't deserve a cent of your money. Not even because of how disgracefully dishonest they're being, just in general. To pretend they're even remotely independent, jeez, seems they learned a lot from their shareholder Mr. Fairfax, eh? If you truly want to support independent media, don't give them any money for their f***ing GoFundMe. Give it to Independent Australia, because I can tell you right now, they don't have a bunch of multi-millionaire backers crying poor and pretending they don't. They just don't. But I'm gonna give you some money though, Crikey. Again, you shouldn't, I'm just doing it because unlike Crikey, I'm consistent. So here you are, 20 bucks. Use that to take on Murdoch, despite the fact you're insufferable hypocrites. You do have one thing going for you though. You pose way less of a risk to Australian democracy than the Murdoch press does. That I can get behind. Like and subscribe and unsubscribe to Crikey because I hope you go bankrupt Crikey, just not from Murdoch. Please share and comment below. Come in.